Welcome to Monday Morning Matters live broadcast show brought to you by Magna Craft Consulting Team, anchored by Ni Dumade, a certified church consultant with the Society for Church Consulting in the U.S. Here, each Monday of every week, we address important, relevant, and actionable topics of interest that will help you and your church grow healthier. And now, meet your host, Ni Dumade. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm so happy to come your way uh, this morning, all the way from the city of Abuja. Um, thank you so much for hooking up. Uh, I can see um, that some people are trying to hook up. Just spend some 30 seconds to wait for them to hook up. 
Um, welcome everyone to this live broadcast. I want to thank you for hooking up to Monday Morning Matter. You are so glad uh, to be part of this live broadcast. I am Ni Dumade. I'm a certified church consultant uh, with the Society for Church Consulting. And uh, I'm the founder and the CEO of Magnicraft Consulting. Okay, we are into uh, church consulting. And what we do is to help churches grow healthier through empirical assessment and start strategic blueprints. Okay, so you are welcome to on board. Thank you for hooking up. Um, let me just check if there are some people online. Okay, I can see some people. So please feel free to stay with us to the end. With me is my wife, uh, Mrs. Ruth Dumade. She's a consulting partner, trained, certified family clinician and mind coach. A big thank you to all those people who have uh, commented last uh, Monday. We had quite some people who commented last yeah. uh, last Monday. Yeah. And so we thank you for re reacting. We thank you for commenting. We thank you for just staying true on the broadcast. Uh, thank you for the time you spent. We are, we know it's um, out of the 24 hours, God has blessed you. I'll say what a great greeting to our viewers. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Good to have you today and it's a pleasure being here again with the CEO of Magnicraft Consulting. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank yes, you. Uh, in fact, I, I felt so um, eased when I started having her with me on the show. Yeah, throughout 2021, uh, 20, 2020. 2020, yes. Um, I did that single handedly all through the year, having to give you good content round every week. Even when we had some challenges, you know how 2020 is. Um, we're still able to um, bring out some good content for you. Uh, please stay safe, um, social distancing, observe the health protocol. I see go out with my nose mask. So please, you anywhere need, you're going to, make sure you just you need to go out to with it. Stay safe. <laughs> stay okay? safe. Stay safe. Quite a lot of uh, pastor friends are having this uh, virus. It's a real, really, we need to be careful. We need to pray and we need to trust God for a, an end Quick. to this pandemic. Yeah. An end to this pandemic. Yes. All right. So thank you um, for hooking up. I'm going to go straight down in this um, broadcast. This month of February, we're going to say, uh, discuss something very, very important. All the four Mondays of February, we're going to look critically into the pains of church decline okay and sometimes we human beings would like to deny that there's pain but god created pain is that not true sure yeah and there's a reason why god created pain we have to you see that we, we use that pain for something negative or we can use that pain for something positive, positive. Yeah. so pain is a an indicator an indicator pain is like a symptom yeah. sometimes when you go to the doctor and he's trying to find out what is wrong with you or what 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 is not in his proper perspective in terms of your systems your structures and your process in your human body he tries to look for where there are pain points and pain points leads us to some six, six symptoms and symptoms will lead, lead us to some diseases yeah. so please let's pay attention um more to this to do this to this protest to, today is like an in, in introduction and then we're going to go dive next week monday into some of the details that we need to go on to now what, how do we define um decline okay decline is more like a decrease or a loss a loss okay or when there's a reduction reduction you know <laughs> reduction in terms of numerical value in terms of cash value in terms of um, your physical capacity your volunteer capacity your resources there's that decline i, I think i'm going to break that down yeah yeah, yeah. what do you say to that uh, decline oh decline is just reduction something that should be going like this is not coming like this so that is what decline that, is about my wife is trying to plot the graph yeah. physically going you like know? this instead of going like this it's, it's going, going like, like this, this. Yeah. Now, the truth about it is that eh, for you to grow you must overcome the gravity of subtraction yeah your back door must be such that it is well ma handled you know our churches these days we focus more on the front door uh, you know we focus more on the front door uh, because that's where we see the 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 
the the lag measures of our effort that people are, are coming, coming into yeah. the church. Okay. Now every church ha- is ca- is either it is growing or is de- it was dying. All right. What precedes dying is declining, and what be- precedes declining is also pain. And because the pa- pandemic brought about a lot of um, pain points. Mm. Okay. People did not show up in church. Uh, there's no question that the church attendance is declining, and this is quite. It's, going to, it's, it's been on for a lot, uh, like over a decade now. This has created a sense of loss and pain, mm. and that also has created some form of uh, reason of um, grief, you know, because you are not seeing your sheep again in the church, and that has created a lot of pain, a lot of discouragement. And then, um, so how do we um, re- reduce this pain? Um, to be sincere, that's the pain of losing members. Pain of losing members. In fact, first of all, I'm sure you'll be helping us talk about that. But I want to say, um, pain. I want to talk a little, a little bit about pain. Uh, have you, have you um, uh, had tooth pain before? Can you remember? Yes, yes, yes. My wife is trying to bring some memories back. Yeah. And then tooth pain was tooth very pain. painful. I remembered when he I had a my surgery. Molar tooth. Yeah. Yes. He had a surgery. Was it not Even too- with the fact that there was anesthesia injected, yeah. the pain was... Yeah, I remember was- that day. For three to four days, you didn't allow me to rest. <laughs> you didn't allow anybody at home to rest because it was excruciating because it was full of aches it was full of um, so much discomfort it was full of so much agony you weren't so happy because of that pain so i want to talk about pain a little bit this morning there is no human on earth that Mm. gets excited about pain. There is nobody on earth that you're going to the surgeon's table and the but surgeon... the reason why I had that pain was I needed a dentist's attention. Yeah, because it was already aching you. Yes. It was paining and you were enduring it. It got to a time you couldn't just cope. The solution was just going to that surgeon, to the, to the dentist, to help you get a permanent solution. So pain sometimes is part of life. But staying in pain is something that should be that should be handled that everybody needs to be deliberate about pain and think of solution to pain so this is why it is very important and very necessary for us to talk about pain it's part of life yeah our light just went up and came up again yeah so that's why it's good to have a backup <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you miss Fueke. I, I, I saw your comment thank you so much uh, for just looking by to watch us on this live broadcast. Okay? Thank you, man. One of the things that I want to uh, also explain here, and it's going to be a bit, a bit of statistics, but um, the cultural Christianity is declining so rapidly. Mm-hmm. You know, like the, that the boomers now, those days, people go to church because it's the culture. Right now, uh, people have the options of not going to church because Seriously. Um, the, bills are gathering. The father's uh, <laughs> income cannot uh, foot the bill, yeah. so the husband and the wife must actually be on the uh, labor market to make sure that there's some enough income for the family. Yeah. Now, look at what is causing the uh, reduction in our attendance. Outside the fact that there's a COVID issue, I'm going to show you something the attendance trend. Now, Ah, uh, let's understand the non-linearity and the shift in church attendance. What it means is that our average attendance is so that when people are not coming frequently, our average attendance is reducing. For example, if a church of one thousand, okay, they, and all the one thousand members the membership come every four Sundays of the month, like this February four Sundays of the month, all the one thousand members you have. They are coming every Sunday. What happens is that the average attendance for February will be 1,000. Hmm. Now, what happens if we have 40% of that 1,000 coming four times in a in month, month, and then you have another 40% come three times in, in a month. month, another 10% comes twice in a month, and then another 10% come once in a month. Now, the average attendance is going to reduce 
to 775 out of 1,000 membership you have. Yeah. Now, the more those frequencies are reducing, now the top side of the screen, as you're seeing, 10%, if you have 10% of your congregation, come four times in a month. And then another 10% come three times in a month. And then you have 20% come one Sunday in a month. You can see that the average attendance has reduced so badly to 275. Mm. So the frequency of attendance is going to affect your church retention. True. The frequency of attendance is going to affect your attendance. And for me, um, as leaders, you are not supposed to even look at your, um, how would I put it, your attendance, uh, you know, because wh what attendance tells you is who those who showed up. All right. Um, what what attendance? Those? What at attendance should also tell you is those who did, who not, did show, not show up, show up. and why they okay? didn't show up. The parable of the lost sheep was yeah, so very yeah. important. Okay, yeah. this parable is about the parable of hundred sheep and then one straight away into the wilderness and then you can say fine he has 99 over 100 that's a past man 99 I, if i have 99 over 100 whoa i'm on top of the world <laughs> really on top of the world well, i'm sure but you, in jesus system he wants 100 he wants because 100. there's a value of that that one you know what the shepherd did? He left the 99 and he went for that one that was trained in the wilderness. It, it was not just a sheep, just sheep ram. It was human. That parable was likened to human. So if this one human doesn't come, heaven is concerned about it. So I think we as leaders, pastors, we should be concerned about that one that wasn't available. Yeah. So you know what the shepherd did? He went for that lost sheep. For that one. And he, he, he did not come back until he got that one. I, 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 want, I want to tell you something about that shepherd. Was it easy for a shepherd looking for a sheep? Wow, wow. Inside the wilderness. Inside the wilderness. So I'm telling you right now, even to look for this one sheep, despite your strategy, sometimes it will be very difficult but something has to be done you need to look for that sheep because that sheep need to come back home yes. yeah so we can't deny the fact that there's some form of pain points yeah when we lose uh church members uh, you know it's, it's so it's so easy now for church members to port very easy you know very, now that things very, are really online yeah now, yeah people people you know? i think people seek for a lot of comforts mm. you know unlike some years ago like some 20 years ago some people gave uh, people like you mm. i remember one of those days you were telling me that those days because of rain you didn't even have an umbrella mm. but you needed to be in church yes and it was raining yeah. what you did was you dressed up but you carried an extra cloth in your bag you didn't say oh it's raining i cannot go to church you you went into the rain and got to church when you got to church you had to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. to go change again yeah in fact we are seeing that dwindle right now yeah yeah in that christendom kind of yeah that kind of commitment so a lot of people like the comfort thing i i don't want to get wet I don't want to i don't want my makeup to just fall i don't I, i'm making up like this rain just spoils it so a lot of comfort so i think that is one of the things that is making us um lose members again yeah mm -hmm. so let's let me let's don't uh, let's cash in that juice or that infrequency of attendance yeah okay now when you don't have people come to church regularly we need to find out a system a system of doing those who didn't show up yeah you can imagine if that if that shepherd didn't count his sheep, yeah, because when you see ninety nine, yeah, much. It's almost like hundred. Yes, yeah, they're much. You know? <laughs> so for for the for the pastor to know that one sheep did had not actually come. strayed away from the fold, it means that he was doing regular checking to know who is. He was in, a deliberate shepherd. Yes, a so, deliberate because shepherd. Because you can see your crowd and say, "Oh no, my the church is full, complete," but. <laughs> just taking some patience to count it's a pain it's a pain point we can actually use that pain and convert it to gain yeah what, what that's how you deal with church decline knowing who it is not 
around the sheepfold. All yeah. right, knowing who is not in the sheepfold. And I said earlier that for a church, God wants us to grow. God wants His church to multiply. God wants His church to expand. But we can't get to that level if we keep having a lot of subtractions. Okay, I mean this the, the, the kind of subtraction I'm talking about is uh, you, when you, when you don't know that 200 people did not show up in church, you don't even know that some good number of your members are not in church but then you're having some pain that the attendance is not I it should be for you so what happens when a pastor notices that his members is uh, is because you know that, that, that you have some pastors who try to do things yeah you know to get back their their sheep yeah you know, for example when when a sheep leaves a church to another church you feel like okay maybe what that church is doing i need to start doing it you know what i'm trying to say is this use that pain to do something that can give you gain not to compromise yeah do you understand? I, I, i'm getting what you're yeah. trying to say so the pain for pastors is to make sure you stay focused stay focused okay and one of the things is to be outwardly focused all right reach out to the community reach out to your jerusalem you know i've seen some pastors who want to make impact in the world but in their jerusalem they they have, they have, they have not no, made impact. nobody has felt you know, them felt their, nobody their, has their, felt their, them. this thing so yeah. we need to make sure that the light shines at your location before it goes brighter to judea to samaria and to the uttermost part yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think i would want to say something you know when you have a large congregation sometimes i think i don't know it's like sometimes it's easier for the sheep to stray when the congregation is large yes it's very large but but when it's so condensed you know everybody you know everybody church. probably you're like 20. so the larger ones need to set up a system, system. to know who is in church yeah and who's in, who's in church. because your capacity as a pastor may not be able to be able to make you gather over 150 persons per time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you need to deliberately set up system to help you check things that aren't just balanced and those that are moving through the back door learn how to feed them fat yes you made you made some mention of something like I, I, I touched some strings in me back door you know there's a front door and there's a back door back front door is the medium at which you get people into church and back door is not really like a door it's so not door so, you know <laughs> and the back door is the medium at which people live in yeah, the church yeah and i found out that almost every church put a lot of attention on the front door so please tell us what's the front door what are it like the front door, yeah. your, your billboard your flyers your gospel conversations and things like that but the thing is that we put more effort on the front door without not putting emphasis on the back so door. so we, we which are the back door so that we know what the front door and back door now, is. now the back door is just any issue that a church member can is going to use to exit the church it might be dissatisfaction it might be um, it's, 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 it's not, not grief. grief it might be uh, conflict conflict whatever it is but one of the things that i want to advise leaders is you know let's be proactive okay somebody going through the back door did not hit the door when he's about to hit the door the day he hits or, she or hits the moment the, they hit yeah. the door it, it's a process. process when you see a sister who is sanguine in nature always greeting everybody sitting down in front you know greeting people and all of a sudden the number of people she's greeting has reduced as this, or she has moved or to the she, middle or, middle yes. middle and then later on she, she moves, moves to, to the back, back. you're not watching then, nobody's observing then, the thing i mentioned now <laughs> she's, she, she comes four times in a, a sunday because when I was young, those days I gave my life. Every day we're going to church. <laughs> Every day we're going to church. Now people go to church just once a week. You can see the infrequency is also. It's a, yeah, it's been affected. So people go out, they exit the back door in. You know, when you want to hit the door, you go through small, 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 small. And then before you know it, you, you're, you're gone. gone. And by the time the person is gone, you're going to take more work. Yeah. Yeah, walk to get the person back so, to the front door. I think door. they say a stitch in time says nine million nine. <laughs> a stitch in time. You, so immediately, when you yeah, symptoms when you see the symptoms, the church member trying to hit the back door, you know, and that's why sometimes churches need to create some sense of belonging. 
let people be heard. You know, I, I, that, that doesn't mean that it should be controlled by them. Because in Act of the Six, when there was a problem in Act of the Six, the widows were angry. They, were, they, they expressed were their happy. displeasure. They, they should be, people should be able to express, express their, their displeasure. Don't have a system in church where people can't talk. People cannot talk. They will go to churches that can air their views. You will stiffen them and they will look for a way to run away. Yes. And you know what happened in Act of the Six? Bible says they had a double meeting. Double meeting in the military is when you have a town hall meeting. So yeah, like a, like plenary a, plenary a plenary session. A plenary session. So people uh, say, hey, in their view, this one gave suggestions, this one uh, compl compl complain about. They are doing eye uh, service in this church. It's no, only who no, know who. And the apostles sat down. They sat down to listen. And listen. And started thinking of solutions. And you know one thing I was so happy about that act of the six. Bible says when the apostles took a decision, the Bible says it pleased, it pleased everyone. Everybody everyone. in the church were happy about and what was the decision the decision was sharing, great system sharing the power share power was not in the, yeah in, in great the, system in the, in the purview of the apostles there was some leader set up as in the form of deacons to serve the tables because you cannot leave the ministry of, of the word, the word and prayer. prayer and go and be serving food. bread and fish food you know <laughs> so but a, a lot of our pastors and leaders especially those that haven't learned how to delegate yeah the they, power of they, letting go yeah, of control yeah, of letting go of control at the end of the day you are already in this thing that you're trying to you want to be the one to do follow up you want to be the one to do hospitality you want to do it the one to at the end of the day you, you feel the so much stress in ministry and you start complaining you start like in fact you start doing it grudgingly and mm -hmm. at the end of the day you're not bringing results because you're not excited about it so i think every church every church leader must deliberately because it is a system of god god wants it to be like that god the father god the son god everybody had their responsibilities and how they could delegate to one another on what to do you can imagine when the holy spirit leaves the work he's supposed to be doing and go do what the son had to do you understand so i think in churches we need to be deliberate about delegating and when you delegate allow those you have delegated to do the work do the work so lastly the point i'm going to make right now you see god is not a waster yeah god will not bless you with people when you don't know how to manage, manage them, them well them, okay? preserve them. If god blesses you with two souls he's going to watch how you're going to take care of those two souls you can imagine um that parable of the lost sheep you can see the attitude he had in trying to restore that one I'm, I'm, I'm sure um if you look at the outcome of that shepherd that hundred she will have multiplied in less time because yes, of, the, yeah. of the shepherd's attitude yeah. to trying to know the state of his flock. Hey, I, I, I was thinking of something right now. Do you know that I, I think I am believing that that shepherd had put so much on that sheep that even when he went looking after the sheep, when he saw the sheep, the sheep came back. Mm. I am thinking that sheep wasn't skinned under the leadership of that shepherd. Mm. That sheep was taken care of to an extent. Or oh, you, you, you just find out that the, 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 the shepherd will see the sheep and the, she the sheep doesn't want to come, come back. Come back. <laughs> the dragon is like, no, I'm not coming. No. <laughs> because of... <laughs> because you have been skinning the, the, no, no, the no. sheep. The, 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 because the church is not home. Oh God, and like that, that's what it means. You've been oh, removed, skinning, skinning, right. skinning, removing the skin. You have started using the skin to do jackets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's a lot of culture, culture shifts. Um, yeah. We have a, a less, less and less ta uh, numbers of the boomers who are so culture crazy. Yeah, you know they don't mind to cancel business meetings to For be in church. church. Yeah, but the Gen X, Y, and Z right now. There's a culture shift in how they think. They say everywhere is church. Yes, everywhere, everywhere is church. church. Can I can be in office and, and I'm in church. <laughs> everywhere is church. My phone, I can just hook up so, to my church. Everywhere is church. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> as a pastor, know to have to seek to set up a system to know the pulse of what's going on in your church. That will let you know how to um, lead your sheep manage your ship well yeah now lastly before we go we are hitting the 30 30 minutes um mark yeah um the, there's what they call a visitors 
volume rate and the visitors retention rate, rate okay yeah. now visitors volume rate is, or visitors volume um is the number of visitors or guests or first time guests that come in to your church now from statistics and those who are into research okay um say that you need 10 times of your average attendance to visit your church every year so for example if you have um, a church of 200 yeah right in a year the number of guests you need so that you're able to overcome this pain of decline, decline is what two thousand wow <laughs> and i'm sure in the subsequent one they're going to break down some of these wow. things how are we? <laughs> So you can imagine when your church is a bit bigger, you need a lot that, um, of work. people to come yeah. to your church. You need that volume. And that volume will only make sense when you have some good retention in place. Yeah. Okay? When you have some good retention processes in place. Because if 10 people come into your church and you have 20 people leaving your church, that's where decline comes in. Okay? Yeah. Decline comes in when you have less coming in and more going, going out. out okay for example you have two people visiting your church and there may be 20 did not show up in church yeah. and that all happens when church is declining we want to wrap it up here uh do you have a final word for our pastors on how to overcome some of these pain points uh, okay okay decline? while we want to talk about that i'm thinking we should just wrap up here but before we wrap up, I want to say that just follow us closely. As you follow us closely, you'll be getting answers to certain pains, certain questions you've been asking God about why your church isn't growing, why it is declining. I'm sure if you follow us throughout this month, you'll be able to get reasons and knowledge on what to do. So. Yeah, yeah, that's it, Daniels. Thank you. Happy New Month, all our friends. Happy to, New Month. We have to wrap it up yeah. here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube. Just so far, we have a lot of people who watch Just our subscribe. YouTube video, but they don't hit the bell. Yeah, hit you the know, bell now. Subscribe, <laughs> like our page. Yeah. Share. Share is share is very free. Share. Yeah. You, you might not. Well, I don't want to believe that you don't need it, but you are enjoying some good content. Can you just share it with a pastor? Share it with a worker? The share it with a, lead, a church leader? Yeah. Okay? And then you, you'll be shocked that they need some of these things we have been sharing. Very important. We are so very prompt with our responses, responses on the um, Facebook page, uh, on our social media page. Please feel free to contact us. And if you have any questions, you want to uh, let us help you to um, deal with that pain of decline, that pain of losing members. We are so experts in church retention because we want, I want to believe that a church cannot grow if you have not addressed your, your retention, retention issues. Yeah. So please feel free to go into our Facebook page okay share to a loved one share to a church worker a church volunteer share to a church leader a church pastor uh, a church uh, worker and i'm sure they will be glad to do we need to convert this pain to gain yeah. and that's what we want to talk about how do we address this pain this pain is real it's real it's, it's actually real. real except you, uh, as a pastor you, you don't, don't you are not a human be, being you don't have feelings uh, uh, yeah and you don't want you don't to be emotions. real to yourself when you love the sheep and you're losing them you're going to have some form of grief some form of discouragement some form of pain yeah. and we need to deal with this issue so that our church can become to multiply and grow as it should be. Yeah. Thank you for staying with us this moment. We Thank need to wrap you. it up here. My name is Nid Dumade. I'm the founder and the CEO of Magnicraft Consulting. My consulting partner is my wife, <laughs> Ruth Dumade. Can you say bye-bye to everyone? Thank you. Thank you, the Thank church you. doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate Continue with the chat button so soon. God bless you. God bless you. We'll see you, you next week, Monday. Bye. Bye-bye.